Have you heard from the boys? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing here. I'm getting the equipment ready, because when they come back, they're going to help me with something really big. What, basting game hens? Game hens? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, boy, that does look like a regular game hen, doesn't it? Mm. Extremely lifelike. Yeah. Flash frozen game hen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but inside there is a tiny microphone hidden in a, a gizzard. <laughs> Can't tell you any more than that. Don't lie in front of Marlowe. Yeah, well, okay, I'll tell you this much. In a couple days, these little suckers are going to be at a banquet where everybody calls everybody else Don, when in fact their real name is Vito. <laughs> testing, one, two, testing. Well, just don't overcook them. 325 degrees, 20 minutes per pound. What time should I be here? Seven. You got to promise to act surprised. Oh, well, I'll be surprised if I get the towels. Oh, you'll get the towels. Cecilia, could you help me? My hand is stuck to this frozen hen. From Venus Flytrap in WKRP to downtown Brown and Simon and Simon, Tim Reed, you get the swellest names. Yeah, it is quite interesting. I always say when I hear about the name, I go, can you, can you change the name? And they go, no. And then later I find out I'm very happy that I <laughs> well, that you did that. that name, yeah. Okay, it's trivia time. Mm -hmm. Now, and this is for you out there, too. When did WKRP go on the air? Got the answer. The answer is... Uh, 78. 1978. You are correct. Thank you. You win, well, I win. You win a lavender pocket <laughs> story that's magically appeared. Is that a trip to? <laughs> a trip to Ogallala, Nebraska. Where you'll stay at my cousin's house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Question number two in the yeah. trivia game. How many episodes of there were there of WKRP in Cincinnati? Ooh, that's a good one. See, I don't know the answer to that. I, gotta, gotta I think there were about 90, 99 or 98, something like that. How yeah. long did it last on the network? Oh, not long enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know Four the answer? Years. Four years. You got right. Now, are the networks real sorry that they let that go? I bet oh, they're really. You betcha. <laughs> oh, they're saying, why, why did, why did we cancel? You know yeah. what happened? They kicked WKRP around, put it in every time slot in the whole nation, yeah. and nobody could find it, and it it lost its audience. And now, now it's considered a classic. It's a classic. Yes. And they're not making it One that we haven't changed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Now, the last trivia question. Are you getting paid the big residuals, Tim? No. Oh. <laughs> no, there really aren't a lot of residuals in a four-year series. If it had gone five, six years, I'd be going, yes, I'll be with you. The minute my limo is running. Yeah. Uh, but uh, no. But it's when I say no, know what people think of. You know, people have this image of Hollywood. It's, it's a lot of bucks and everything. Every time you go on the television, you know, Oh, but man's worth millions. Well, yeah. further from the truth. Uh, ah, poo. But it's, again, it's money. I mean, it's still manna from heaven. I, yeah. I got paid when I was doing it. This is all just uh, Christmas time in July when a check comes. I remember when the checks were down to $35 a week in the, in the good I mean. old days. <laughs> I had, I, we're going to go back to yeah. Mr. Kelly's in Chicago, mm -hmm. and you did an act called the Tim and Tom Act. Yes. And the reason I know about this Tim, mm -hmm. he's the Tim part of the Tim and Tom Act, yeah is there was a, a gentleman who came to Lincoln, Nebraska, who was doing the warm-up for the Frank Sinatra show, a man mm -hmm. by the name of Tom Dreesen. Yes, Tom Dreesen. And he said that he, you and he were brothers, mm -hmm. and you did this little, you did this comedy routine. Not Blood Brothers. Not uh, Blood Brothers. Yeah, because he's white, and uh, I don't think we were brothers. <laughs> 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 but uh, it was the first uh, black and white comedy team in America, and um, it was a lot of fun for six years. We, uh, we marched right into oblivion. We almost starved to death, and we thought, we better split up, because this is not working. <laughs> uh, but we had a lot of fun. We worked at Mr. Kelly's. Uh, we did a lot of the old television shows at that time, the old David Frost show, the, uh, the Merv Griffin show, which, of course, is still around. And uh, it was a lot of fun. I wouldn't be where I am today had I not met him. And had we not Do you know where he is these days? Yes, he's still working with Sinatra. He works yeah. Vegas and Tahoe and Atlantic City. He's doing quite well. Mm -hmm. You know, Tim was well, the first black comic to play Africa. Are you yes. glad? Are you glad you did it? Oh, at that time, yes, I was glad because uh, it opened my eyes to an area which, uh, again, not Sun City. <laughs> uh, it was <laughs> 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 I had not been to Sun City under any circumstances. But at that time, this was way back in '75 when there were no uh, no bands, anything like that. And I went over uh, with a show. I was just part of a major show that went over. And for me, it was an eye opening. I would not have firsthand knowledge, and I would not understand the, the conflict there. Uh, the way I do, mm. had it not been the fact I spent over six weeks there uh, being uh, just totally angered by every, every turn, every step, every, everything that I've, that I've been involved with there. So my, my heart and my feeling involved in, in, in the 
fight against the apartheid is very personal. Mm -hmm. And I have friends, uh, both white and black, in South Africa who I hear from and communicate with. Tim, do you keep your temper under control? Uh, no, I haven't learned that formula yet. However, I am the older I get, the wiser I hopefully I become, that I'm, I'm trying to at least vent it in a more constructive and positive manner. I've heard you've been able to pick up something and throw it at the television <laughs> set, <laughs> and Tom Dreesen was saying that you and he had a fight what, yeah. There was just knock him down, drag him out before you went out to do your show. Yeah. And then you yeah. were great. I mean, the energy that yeah. is created when you're angry. Yeah, I, I, I come from a family of fighters. Uh, my grandmother ran a, a boarding house for most of my childhood. And uh, it was constant throwing out of drunks and, and, uh, and things like that around. And when people won't pay, he said, oh, yes, you'll pay. And my grandmother was a very outgoing woman and had a quick temper. And she, I've seen her slap guys around. And, Big grown men who are going, yeah, I'll pay you. Give me a break here, you know. <laughs> so I come from a fiery family. Yeah, but the price you have to pay when your temper gets out of control can be very precious. It can. And I, again, I said, the older I get, the more I realize that it's, it can be destructive. And if you don't control it, at least vent it out in a more positive manner. So now I'm, I, am, I am still outspoken, but I try to be more in a positive. Uh, I'll listen to you at least a few seconds before, before I yell. Before I hit you. <laughs> <laughs> no, before I yell. I'm not oh, in oh. the <laughs> violent part. Just the temper just seems to be uncontrolled. You know, I'd like to see more of you in Simon and Simon. You're better than the small part that you've got. You really are. You're a good actor. Well, I understand, but I still enjoy the, the thing I like about Simon and Simon, the role, is that uh, the show is called Simon and Simon, not Simon and Simon and Brown. <laughs> and my, my job is co-star, and my job is to, is to really bring in a whole different point of view to highlight the show in a certain way. And uh, I enjoy that. I like being on the show. I get paid whether I do one line or a hundred. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to be in a scene, and they, and they understand this, and I appreciate their understanding. I don't want to be in a scene if there has no purpose. I mean, if I'm just walking and going, hi, guys, any cases lately? And then go out just so I can get paid. I, don't, I really don't want to do that. So we have talked. I have taken myself out of scenes. I have said, guys, I read the script. There's no reason for me to be in that scene. But they're not going to pay you if you don't talk, if you're not Oh, no, they pay me. They pay you anyway. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah, under contract. Under contract. So I, I don't, there's no reason for me to be in that scene. Either we'll write a reason for me to be in that scene, put me in another scene, or take me out of that scene. Uh -huh. And they appreciate that because sometimes it's very difficult. How to utilize all the characters? We have the two stars. We have the mother. We have the dog Marlowe, and mm -hmm. we have me. And uh, sometimes we can't. <laughs> you set up priorities yeah, here. I have gone to Paris with them. I mean, here's a police officer in San Diego. Think about the writers trying to figure out how to get me there to Paris. <laughs> what is he doing in Paris? The guy's a San Diego cop. Uh, every time they go on, like, how do I get my character involved with them? Because the show is a very broad stroke show. I mean, they move around. They just don't deal with every case in San Diego. And I, I give it to the writers. They have tried, and they have done a good job, I think, of keeping me intricately involved in, with the series. Okay, one last thing, Tim. Let's stop this madness. Yes. He's got a music video out. What is it? Well, I, uh, about 18 months ago, I created a, a concept for a, a music video, an anti-drug music video. And through the organization that I'm on the board of directors of, along with Joe McCraney from the show, called the Entertainment Industries Council. Uh, uh, it's an a, a organization that the whole purpose is to use entertainment uh, business in a more positive fashion to fight drug abuse. This is the most powerful thing there this television mm -hmm. that people are watching because uh, they live by what comes across that too. So we want to send positive messages to young people and we want to reach them in which they are now watching and music videos are the in thing now. They are what young yeah. people are involved with. So I have, I have constructed a, a message that is very subtle and very entertaining. It is not a propaganda documentary about drug abuse. It is an entertaining, thought-provoking uh, anti-drug film that happens to have the First Lady of the United States singing in it. So for any reason other than I want to see the First Lady rock out, they appreciate you watch it. <laughs> it's called Stop, <laughs> Stop the, Stop the Madness. Madness. We welcome you back to Nebraska. Tim came to Lincoln when WKRP was in its heyday yes. at the Centrum. And you look yes. like you've lost a little weight since then. But, yeah. but the muscle, that's all muscle, all right? Muscle, all muscle, all, right. all muscle. Well, please come back to Nebraska and see us yeah. again. Thank and you. Continued success in Simon and & Simon and all of your little adventures. All right, thank okay. you very much. Tim Reed, please stay with us. Morning Show continues. We'll be right back.